Uh, this is for both of you, but uh, you have a huge variance in your roles. You know, I mean, for uh, Ms. Michelle, it's you know, you have Sukasa from Lucky Star, and then Yuki Nagato, and then Rukia, and then for uh, Johnny, you've got Ichigo, and then Klaus from Last of Us. How do you manage such a huge variance between, you know, monotonal characters between younger and then more intense? Do you want to take that first? Okay. <laughs> Um, you know, when I first started doing voiceover work, I didn't have that kind of range. It kind of came with practice and with, act, you know, acting classes. And, um, vocally, I think our, our vocal cords are like an instrument. And, um, you know, you just learn how to use them in different ways. And uh, I think a lot of times, too, the character kind of lends itself to, to the variation in the voice. And... Um, you know, I guess I'm, we're both just lucky, I can't speak for Johnny, but I feel lucky that I am able to do, you know, such a, a wide range of characters. But it can't, you know, it wasn't like that at first. I had to really, it's like practice, you know, you take animation classes and you learn how to develop a character. And th through that, you get the vocal variation in the character. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm trying to think of how it happened with me. I, the first thing I did was was Fashion Trigun, you know, and uh, he, he was, you know, he was he was a little higher pitched, you know, and, and it was like I guess when I talked normally, I guess maybe my pitch was usually like in a higher range, you know, and so it really worked for that character back then, you know, and then I remember auditioning for Kiba and Wolf's Ring, and, and he sounded cool, you know, and, and a little deeper, and so I, I lowered myself a little, you know. And, uh, and then Klaus was just a lot younger, you know, um, even Renton. Renton Thurston. You know, and I just kind of, like, I just <laughs> oh pinched a little bit, and I was like, Okay, he sounds like this. <laughs> uh, and, uh, you know, you just kind of go for it, you know. I, I don't really focus too much on that unless it's, you know, I, I really more just try to think about how am I going to make this line make sense, you know, or like how am I going to bring this character to life. Because a lot of times I just, I just, I mean, it's just my natural range, you know. Um, but yeah, I just kind of do it. Coach, nice. How about this young lady here? What's your favorite spot? Favorite spot? Who's your favorite spot? Green Joe? He's Great probably job. mine too, yeah. <laughs> I wish, I, I wanted him to last a little bit longer, actually. Hey, what? hey. <laughs> that far. Thanks. Spoiler. Spoiler alert. <laughs> I liked Grimjow too. He was pretty badass. Can I say that? No. Oops. <laughs> Take it back. Uh, who else? Yes. My favorite video game I've worked on. Um, gosh. Uh, Resident Evil. <laughs> that was fun because it was, you know, I'm, it was hard because there have been so many Jill Valentines, and it's like coming into a game like that where you've had like three other Bill Jill, Jill Valentines or four other Jill Valentines. It was kind of difficult, but I love her character and I love the game. I just thought, you know, like Revelations, they said, like, all the um, gamers were like, this is great, it's like the old, you know, Resident Evil games, it's gory, it's scary, so that for me was really fun to be able to, to play that. Yeah. Nero. Uh, how do you guys feel about anime turning into live action movies? I don't know. Um, I... You know, part of me gets excited, you know, but then I've been let down as well, you know? You seen Dragon Ball? <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? I, like, I was, I was somewhere in the hotel or whatever, and it was on, and I was like, wow, oh, I hadn't seen that yet. And I was like, oh, I really want to check it out. And I was watching it, and I was like, what? And they're like, you know, they're on that, like, clothesline. And they're like fighting on the clothesline and doing these like wire gags, you know, that were like, I don't know, 
ridiculous. Like it was like uh, obviously they're on a wire because it's like they flip and then they go. Who's the guy holding the wire? He's like, oh, it's too heavy for me. And I was so disappointed, you know. Like after ten minutes, I was like, man, that sucks. How do you guys feel about yeah. anime being turned into live action? That's Just kind of how I afraid, feel about it too. You're afraid they're gonna screw it up? Well, yeah. What about Bleach? I mean, it's they, Warner Brothers has got it, so. I can't even believe that. Like for me, that is like I just don't even. I'm like this. <laughs> I think they should, if they're gonna do it, they it's okay for them to do it, but they should, like, do it computer animated or something. You know, do a CG style, so that we can come in and. <laughs> to, you know, to carry it, but well, it's like, we've well, already established it, and the fans love it for what it is, why try and change it? It just doesn't make sense. Well, you, you know? know how I had that callback? It was because Christian Bale was out for my part, Leo, <laughs> so, you know. That makes all the difference. <laughs> Over here. Blank shirt, yeah. I mean, the only time I've ever done anything like that is like, like, it, you know, I, I don't know if you guys, do you guys have fries, electronics around here? Yes. You know, like, it, it, half the time when I go there, there's a guy outside trying to sell something or, you know, wants me to, like, give money for something. And uh, I'm just there to get, like, a cable or something, and I don't want to talk to them, you know? And so I usually, if I'm with someone, then I just start talking gibberish. <laughs> you know, like, I mean, I don't even know if I can do it. I just go, You know, I just kind of like do that. Like, I don't know. Like, I don't know. Like, I don't know. And so they, they never, they're like, when they hear that as you're approaching, like you're talking to somebody in that weird whatever, they're like, Forget it. <laughs> don't ask that guy, because. <laughs> Oh, that happens to me a lot. Yeah, did, uh, Wolf's Ring. Oh, yeah. Did you guys see what, who saw Wolf's Ring? Okay. There was, I played, I just came in and played uh, this little girl who has a, uh, one of the wolves who dies, or one of the, I can't remember exactly the scene now, but my dog had just died, like the day before I went in to do that scene. I know, it's terrible, but I totally like, was... <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that's true. I, mean, I would say the same. Wolf's Rain did it yeah, for me, Wolf's too, Rain. you know. Was... And you know, for Bleach, the um, uh, Memories of Nobody, the last scene, oh. I was totally holding back tears. <laughs> it was sad. It was sad, yeah. Because you were, you yeah. liked this girl. Yeah. Or loved <laughs> <laughs> I felt bad. There's that. I think, I think maybe when, like, earlier on in the episodes where he's talking about his mother and stuff, you know. You know, and that, I was like, and that's what really got me into the show, you know, is, is seeing that and wanting to see more of that kind of thing, you know. The vulnerability yeah, of yeah. the character. It's always fun to play that, too. Yeah. And it, it all obviously helps if the music, it just hits the tone just right, you know. <laughs> Sends you over the edge. Yeah. You're like, I can't do my line. <laughs> Humans more? People, humans. Um, I don't know. Isaiah. I think he's, or well, he says it often. <laughs> humans are so interesting. <laughs> In case you don't know, that was from da 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 da
Yes, it, with the camera. I don't know. Yeah. Um, so, Harvey Tsukamiya, Nagato and Koizumi, I gotta know. What was it like working on Endless Age? Woo! Uh, oh. It was endless. It was endless. I was, was like, eight. Hey. I'm like, can't you just copy and paste? <laughs> no, just do the whole thing. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. You too. I mean, it it makes sense that I mean, what? How brave of them to do something like that? First off, you know, and and it kind of makes sense that it's in that whatever. I guess just Time alternate, warm. yeah, and just going. And so it it's kind of makes sense. But then, yeah, as we were dubbing it, it was like, and it's the same line. The same line. Over yeah. and over. Yeah. Yeah. over. Just like Groundhog's Day. I had actually I had actually mentioned to like Eric and them, the producers, I was like, hey, could could we like switch up roles? Could I be like, you know, how do he? You know? It's, a, it's an alternate world, right? Can, can we have, can we have accents in another episode? And and they actually were like, that's a great idea, but then it was shot down. Producers were like, meh. <laughs> How about over here? This lady with the blonde hair. Are you going to dub what? I don't know. You mean the Hellverse? Yeah! <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe you'll have to wait and Maybe. see. Maybe. If they, if they, uh, if you guys go to Viz and keep saying, "Hey, why aren't you guys showing more of, uh, you know, Bleach with Johnny and Michelle?" Because we love them. <laughs> Do that. Maybe if you guys go, please go and email Viz and say how much you love us. Because then they will not get rid of us. Yes. Yes. In the hat. And say that, and tell them that you want us to be in the movie. Yeah, in the live action movie with the live action. Woo! That's like in a CG. Yeah, tell them. And then we'll just do the voices. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. All right, got it? Don't say you heard that we okay. said that, though. Write it down? Say that it was your idea. <laughs> like, you should be like, I had this great idea. So, like, all of you guys. Yeah. Tell them that you don't want to see a celebrity playing each Any of our characters. <laughs> The most obscure thing? Yeah, the most obscure, like role or whatever. Yeah. Um, hmm. What do you think? I, I I got called in for this game. I, I talked about this the other day. I got called in for a game, and uh, I mean, I didn't know what it was. You know, I was just like, okay, game. It pays more. Cool. And so I went in, and then as I was looking at the script, uh, he was like, oh, okay, you're gonna be this goblin. And I was like, oh, okay. And you might have actually did the recording on this game or whatever. I don't remember Eddie? the name of it, but anyway, so uh, yeah, it was a goblin, and then like it was just vowels. There was like no words, <laughs> just like vowels, you know. And I'm like, well, what is what is this? Is that like a language? And they're like, well, no, I mean, it's just the noise that you got to make. And I'm like, okay, so just make something up. And they're like, yeah, okay. So then all I did for you know four hours was like. <laughs> And screaming, and then they're like, and now you're being electrocuted, now you're on fire, and now you're on a journey. And so it was like that, like the entire time. And so that, I don't, nobody will know that I did it. I don't even know the I'm name. I'm sure of the your game. vocal cords didn't think it was obscure. No, I, I actually lost a job because afterward I couldn't do anything. I'm um, sure. And so I yeah, lost a gig a that days. I was supposed to get in. Yeah, erg. <laughs> you know anything? Um, you know, I, I feel like. Uh, not saying anything bad because I love what I do, but I do a lot of looping, uh, ADR, which is kind of an obscure part of production because we go in after a scene is shot and we'll do like all the voices for the background. And that's pretty obscure, I think. I mean, it's necessary because it builds a scene up, but um, I do obscure stuff like every day. <laughs> that's my life. <laughs>